My name is Claire Kaisley Smith. I teach at Somerset Elementary School in Kinkora, Prince Edward Island. It is a K-8 consolidated school and I teach K-8 music, grade 7 and grade 8 language arts, and grade 8 health. I'd like to begin by saying that this presentation details a project that I didn't complete as part of my master's degree, but one that I was able to participate in because of the contacts I made through this degree. Dr. Sean Weeb, one of my professors, was conducting a research project looking for volunteers and I offered to be part of it. This presentation is a result of the project that I did with my grade 8 language arts students as part of that research. Literacy. Traditionally, it was known as the ability to read and write. We see the students in this first picture using those basic literacy skills. We still use those skills to make sense of printed text and in order to read the printed word. But it's not the only type of literacy we use today. In the 21st century, students need to be able to make meaning of and create texts using more than just the printed word. They still need to be able to process information that is textual, but also information that is visual and auditory, spatial and so on. This is where multiliteracies come in. The New London Group was a group of 10 educators who met in New London, New Hampshire in September of 1994 to discuss literacy pedagogy. Through those discussions, they developed the idea of multiliteracies and published A Pedagogy of Multiliteracies in 1996. Essentially, they concluded that because information can be interpreted and created using a variety of modalities, the traditional concept of literacy needed to be changed and hence they coined the term multiliteracies. Therefore, literacy in education can take many different forms, including the traditional reading and writing, but also through tactile and spatial awareness, through visual and auditory input, and through the use of technology. The project that I did with my grade eight language arts students used multiliteracies, particularly digital literacy. I felt it was very important to use digital and multiliteracies for a few reasons. Because it made the project more interesting to adolescent students. Because the project was then more accessible to students with a variety of academic abilities. The use of technology made it very relevant to a literacy that most of them are already very familiar with. And it created a lot of cross-curricular opportunities. In fact, the mere mention of the fact that we were going to be putting away our traditional literacy tools and replacing them with digital literacy ones had my students immediately engaged. So what was the project? The purpose of the project was to produce three different types of text forms, a spoken word rant, a persuasive paragraph, and a haiku series, but all using the same data set. The data that was collected at the beginning of the project was analyzed differently for each of the different text forms and the students learned to use their skills with revision in order to create a new representation of the same material. Also, students were collecting the data visually at first instead of with text in order to experience research in a non-traditional way. Um, this was a six-week project, but before the project began, I had already completed lessons on persuasive text and revision of writing. Also, at the beginning of the project, I did a week-long lesson in poetry in which the students had a lot of practice writing haiku, both in the traditional 575 syllable pattern, but also in a more modern freeform pattern. One of the strategies that I had used during this lesson was a comparative analysis of photos in order to prepare them for this upcoming project. I had the students experiment with two unlike images and try to find some common ground between them. Then on this comparison and the resulting common ground that they discovered, that's what they used to build their haiku. Therefore, the students had knowledge of this before the project even got underway, which meant I didn't have to get into a lesson in the middle of the project. As digital literacy was such a large component of this project, the first step was to become comfortable with laptops that we had borrowed. Because I was participating in a research project through UPEI, I was able to borrow enough laptops that students would be able to have one computer for each partner group. 
I had decided to begin the project with students working in partners so that they would be able to use some of the discussion in their partner groups in order to help drive their creative thinking process. Also, being able to have the computers in the classroom for the students to work on prevented all of the upheaval that always happens when you have to take a class from the computer lab to their own classroom. But it did mean that we had to work offline instead of online. So students did spend some time learning how to transfer pictures that they would take on their own personal devices, like tablets and cell phones, to the laptops using USB cords instead of on the internet. Also, they spent some time getting used to using Windows Movie Maker because that was the program that we were going to be using for organizing their photos and also for creating their haiku series later on in the project. Once the students were comfortable with the programs, I got them to use their own devices to collect photos on a topic that they had chosen. For example, if they had chosen a topic like animals, they would collect or take photos of animals. And then also I suggested that they take pictures um, that related to the topic. So they might take pictures of animal habitats or they might take pictures of animal food or anything that might relate to that project. Um, I really got them to think outside of the box in order to prepare them for the nep next step of the project. And the students were working in partners, so there was a lot of discussion about what they would photograph and it really helped them to activate their thinking process. Once they had all of their photos collected, they needed to then visually analyze them and begin to narrow their topic down. So at this point, I led them to the discovery that this was the same as narrowing a topic for a traditional essay. Also, because I had asked them to think outside the box, most of them had an abundance of pictures and quite a wide variety. So now their task was to look through all of them and focus on a recurring theme that they would see and to weed out ones that didn't fit. For example, if they had that t animals topic, they might have noticed that they had so many different photos of like any kind of thing dealing with animals, but maybe they focused in on some of the photos that were of animals that may have been sick or mistreated or puppy mills or things like humane societies and things like that. And I encouraged them to find ones that seemed to have a message or that seemed to have a, um, something important to them. Once they had then narrowed their topic and the photos had all been sorted out, the students then needed to develop a statement about that topic. So had it been the animals one and the students had some of those photos that I had mentioned before, maybe they had come up with a statement like animals deserve to be treated fairly and humanely or maybe animal cruelty needs to stop. So once they had their statement, then it was time for them to develop opinions to support that statement. So as they were still working in partners at this time, it led to some very active discussion about their opinions. And it was really important for them to work together to come up with opinions that they could both agree on, but that also supported their statement and the photos that they had collected. The next two steps of researching facts to support their opinions and developing a spoken word rant sort of overlapped one another. All along, I had been giving them hints about the fact that the collection of pictures they had done at the beginning was a type of research, but at this point I made it more dis explicit. And I discussed with them the fact that research doesn't always have to be something that's completed just when they need to do a project, but that research is something they do all the time. The process of collecting photos was a form of research, and it follows the same process that applies when they research facts for a paper on, say, World War II or on the um, ecological use of water. I also completed a mini lesson at this point in time on the aspects of a spoken word rant, as that was one of the things we hadn't covered prior to this project. We watched quite a few of Rick Mercer's rants and the students had to then use their critical thinking skills to analyze the rants and to develop a set of rules for creating that particular text form. We also discussed the fact that in order for people to be taken seriously, their opinions really must be backed up in fact. So we went to the computers and completed some traditional research in order to determine whether the opinions stated in Rick Mercer's rants were actually based on fact which we found out they were. When they discovered that although the rants were entertaining, they were also based in fact, 
a lot of them began to discover the connection between a rant and a persuasive text. So once they had completed and presented their spoken word rant, I got them to work individually and to use their skills with revision to take the same information but to present it in a traditional persuasive paragraph. So this did really test their skills with revision, but it was really important for them to keep the same message, but just present it in a different way. And then finally, once they had finished their persuasive paragraph, they were then getting back together in partners, testing those revision skills again, and conveying the same information, but through a series of haiku. So they had their original information first represented in spoken word rant, then in a persuasive paragraph, and now it was going to be a more creative form as a haiku. This is where we went back again with Windows Movie Maker, and they would sort of display their photos and their haiku as a bit of a short film. So in the end, students were emulating Rick Mercer, and they developed very powerful spoken word rants. They also fine-tuned their research skills and their revision skills to create a persuasive text. And finally, they used photos like this and like this to create poetry like this. I think this project was very successful and I'm very happy with it. I watched every student in my class have an aha moment at different times throughout the project. I feel that they each gained a better understanding of what revision truly is, and I believe that their eyes were opened with respect to research. Before this project, I think that had you asked students what research was, they would have stated that it was really just looking up facts for a project at school. But I think now they realize that research is actually something that happens every day in our lives, and that any time information is collected for a purpose, it's research. When I reflected about this project, I think that I would revisit the technology that I used. It really would have been ideal to use something like Google Drive or a similar pro program that would have allowed for many people to be able to work on the same document simultaneously. But unfortunately, we were working with the limitations of technology presented in schools, uh, so it really needs some room for improvement. I'm not quite sure what to do, but I'm going to do some more thinking on that one. Also, I really would like to involve other teachers in this project so we can capitalize on the wonderful cross-curricular potential it has. I think it would be very interesting to involve the science or social studies teacher in a project like this. And I believe that any opportunity for cross-curricular projects really gives the students a rich learning experience and it also helps them to see the relevance of the process and to be able to apply it in other places. So in the fall, when I return to school, I will definitely be planning planning to complete this project again. The experience was very rewarding and the students and I both gained so much that I really would be foolish not to. I'm looking really forward to working with a new group of students and finding out what parts resonate with them and what new discoveries about learning that they're going to make. Like this haiku, I believe that this project is full of promise, is fresh and new, and I look forward to the buds that bloom with next year's students. Thank you.